I have spoken with Councillor Harper about this, and he has mentioned to me that he's um, corresponded with you by email um, at least at least twice. Doesn't matter how many times. He's completely correct, and you did say in your question as well you don't want to go through the park. That isn't the intention. It will not go through the park. But there remains a possibility, and that's all it is at the moment, that it could go around the edge of the park, particularly running up the side of the tube line. So that possibility remains. I suggest that the best thing is, is to meet up with Andrew, take up the offer of Andrew Harper, meet with some of your friends and some of your colleagues from the local area, and, and walk through the site and speak to him directly about it. Rather than corresponding by email, speak to him directly. We, ha we have a policy within the borough of a Premier Parks policy. That means there is a Premier Park within one mile of every person within the borough. Now you have Montrose and also you have Watling as well. Now some of the small parks, did you mention Stilk Street? Oh, yes. See, parks like that, we don't replace or renew the play equipment in those areas, particularly when they've been damaged or vandalised, because they're just damaged and vandalised again. And all we're doing is spending more and more money on it. So we took the policy decision to put the money into the main parks, these premier parks, of which you have two so very well in the area. And that's where we put the money in the resources. So that's why you don't have them in the park <coughs> reservation. In regards, um, you mentioned about facilities for children. When I was young, I did go to a youth club, but people don't want youth clubs nowadays. They just don't want to do that kind of thing. And I have to say that um, I, I recognise that uh, the issue of antisocial behaviour, particularly with young people, is an issue which I should come in for. Um, but I am meeting with someone this week who said he wants to speak to me about how he can work with the council. And that's the way we see going forward providing groups uh, to enable themselves to work with young children, voluntary groups and community groups. And it does work in other parts of the borough, so it certainly could work here as well. I don't like CPZs, but it doesn't matter what I like and what I dislike, because I don't live here. Um, so let me start by saying that. Some people think the council are desperate for CPZs in. They're not. It comes down to there are parking problems within the area. I know that tonight from trying to, to park outside myself. I well, in Avenue, for example. And so, we, the amount of complaints that we received from the council, we investigated and said to people, what we help out with? What do you need? Now, we didn't say, we're going to put a CPZ in. We said, is there anything that we can do in addition uh, to traffic restrictions, possibly including a CPZ? Now, we consulted far and wide, because you have to do that, give everyone an opportunity. And most of the people said it was too wide to protect, basically, the shopping area, and particularly the tube and man and so the proposal was taken back again, it was looked at, uh, and it was reduced, not only in size, but also in the amount of time um, that the restrictions were imposed. So it was two, one hours a day, I think, yes. that's, that's the most recent proposal. And um, my understanding from this, because I'm no longer involved in it, is that that will go out for consultation um, after discussion um, with the Chief Officer, Mike Freestone, who's responsible for that. Mm -hmm. And then, if that is agreed through the consultation, then that will go ahead but it is all subject to being agreed through consultation with the local residents. Yes, there has been many problems with traders. There's been a lot of encroachment, not only just simply putting down <coughs> fruits and vegetables and other goods that they're trying to sell, but particularly with the cages. Um, we did take action against those people in the cages. Um, some have claimed that they had a plan of permission through default of being there for so many years. Um, those that couldn't, couldn't explain that way, um, basically appealed to the planning inspector when we told them they had to take them down. Um, the planning inspector said they didn't have permission and we took action and as I recall, I think it was eight, I think eight had to take them down. Quite a few of the shops own um, a portion of the pavement in front of their shops, so they're allowed to. It's when it goes beyond that and that's maybe where people think they're on the pavement, they're not, they're actually on their own land. But we, we, do, we do take enforcement action if they go beyond that. As I said at the beginning, we are a billion pound a year organisation. We have a lot of money coming in and coming out. And we have a lot of money through things like council tax being paid in, particularly business rates which are paid to us every month by businesses, and we pay them to the Treasury, to the government once a quarter. So for three months we have a lot of money. We have money coming in through different things like um, housing for example, money coming in through parking, all kinds of things. So at any one time we have a lot of money in cash doesn't mean it's free money that we can spend on anything. It means someone's going to, we're going to have to pay it to someone, or it's going to have to pay for something in a couple of weeks, a couple of months' time. 
What complicates it even further is that um, the government wouldn't give us any money to rebuild our primary schools. Now many primary schools are not as in a good condition as this one is. Uh, and it means that we had to look at alternative ways of providing money for our primary schools. And without going into the details of that, we came up with something called the, the Peace Kit Programme, the Primary Schools Investment Capital Programme. And what we did with that, we knew that we'd borrow some money, just like a mortgage, and we could borrow in 2006 when the interest rates were reasonably low. And then we knew that most likely by 2008 interest rates would rise, which they did until the economic problems. So what we did with that money, we thought we need that now, we borrow it low, and we spend it in 2008 when we start our Peace Kit Programme, which we've now started currently starting on two schools. So we took that money and we put it as a bank into two, two banks in Iceland. Those banks, we were advised that those banks had good credit ratings by Her Majesty's Treasury. They said these are very good to put them in there. Now people say, well why didn't we put them in a UK bank? And the answer is, it wasn't enough money. They only wanted larger sums than that. And so we had to put them in these Icelandic banks. Now people also say, why didn't we take it out when you realised there was a problem? We didn't realise or know there was a problem until literally hours before the bank effectively collapsed. And it meant that we couldn't take our money out for that reason. Secondly, more importantly, we had them on fixed two-year terms. So the first one was due to expire in November, literally days before. So we couldn't just take our money out. I understand that Brighton and Hove Council, they took their money out. But what they actually did, they took it out after their period had matured. So they had their money back and they were asked, do you want to reinvest it? We, they said, no, we think you're a bit rocky at the moment, we, we don't want to do that. Barnett didn't have that opportunity to do so. Now, when it comes to, we, we'll get the money back, we don't know yet, because we were not considered a preferred creditor. The UK government, while it was quite happy to bail out the banks, said that local authorities are money, which belongs to you and I. They said, well, you know what you were doing, you take your chances and you've lost it. We don't think that's very fair. So we are putting pressure on the government through the local government association and others. They help and support us. And I understand some of the unions also join in with us and said that they should do this. Um, our chief financial officer recently went with a representative from Kent County Council who will also have a lot of money with the Icelandic banks. They went to Iceland and the situation has changed slightly. We are now considered a preferred creditor, which means those people that get their money back, we've moved up the pecking order. So we are still waiting and certainly hoping that we, we get the money that we had on loan with a bank back. But at the minute, we can't say because we don't know. We have constantly spoken to traders about this. The problem that we have as a council, and not only as you as a resident, is that it is unscrupulous people just dumping their rubbish. And it is a problem. We constantly go down there. Uh, myself and the leader of the council went down not very long ago and we've repeatedly gone down there just to check up on the council to see how they're doing. And every time we go there, it's more and more new rubbish there. And it's the biggest problem that we have. And maybe, maybe it's something that the Save the Neighbourhood team could be involved with. So perhaps we go again, see where we are now, and we'll take the next step in the, in the process of trying to clean up that thing. We do provide bins for people, refurbished bins, for people who are uh, in financial need and have problems, and actually happen in that case.